Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Gulf Show, everybody. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 41. Welcome, everyone, watching everyone on... Wow, that was a great sentence. Welcome, everybody, watching on Spotify and YouTube and by the space station out in Asgard because the hobbits are coming. And Valbuena is a hobbit in Shakiri. He is over there. But everybody, welcome watching on the show. And let me just introduce my co-host to the show first. Solomon, how you doing, mate? You doing great? A Chelsea fan and a Bruce Dortmund fan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing my dandy. And you are possibly in my household right now. That sounds oh. creepy. <laughs> it does. I don't know why. But yes. Okay. Well, glad to have you in my household and locked in my basement. And also another guest on the show who is here before, and I'm glad to have him out. A transfer agent, of course. Agent Dimitri. How you doing, mate? Who is a transfer agent for multiple, multiple clubs? And what's your newest club you are at right now, Mr. Agent Dimitri? So if I'm trying to do the same thing here, it's like... Mm-hmm. And it's initially, it's the same code as the previous version of. Major, we're not talking game, about hacking but... Real Madrid's bank account. Come on, let's. What what team are you um, at right now? It's, it's, it's like it's, it's. Oh, I'm team. Uh, uh where is it? Uh, I I uh, honestly no, I'm I'm a team Uchiha. Okay. Very nice. I like that. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for joining on the show, and let us first get into what we love to see. And that is um, actually breaking news. But before breaking news, one of the breaking news I want to announce is, Solvent, can you just um, keep them entertained with some random singing? Uh, 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 really, singing is not my forte. Try singing the happy birthday song. Everybody knows that one. <laughs> well, well, well. What? Not everybody. Come on, straight. Some of us, some of us who grew up. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, um, no, not really. But I couldn't, I couldn't sing a tune for you if you want to. I want you to sing the most beautiful song you can sing. Come on, son. I'm right next to you. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. 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 No, we good. Uh, singing, singing. What is singing? It's a pleasant sound. Anyways, uh, what's the next topic? Okay, that's enough of that. I just wanted to prove a point that I'm right next to you. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, as we said, breaking news. Let us get into it right now. Crisis. So, first one, of course, we have to talk about the Ninja Turtle. I mean, sorry, um, Mbappe. So, Barcelona copied clever Chelsea transfer to plan to sign Kylian Mbappe as PSG revealed major obstacles. So, Chelsea have dealt, been dealt with a major blow in the hopes of signing Kylian Mbappe this summer despite having a drastic clever plan. So Barcelona appear to have taken a leaf out of Chelsea's book as the two clubs battle to sign Kylian Mbappe. The 24-year-old has been heavily linked with an exit from PSG this summer after deciding not to extend his future for the French capital team beyond next year. So according to the Independent, Barcelona are just like the Blues. <laughs> That was weird. Attempting to negotiate a player plus cash deal to secure Mbappe's signature. So reports state that the two sides are looking to structure an offer for the France international who's expected to seek pastures in a new either the summer or next. So um, Chelsea's is possibly looking for 250, but um, obviously Al Nasser or El, one of the Saudi Arabian countries did it. Offer Mbappe a seven hundred twenty million dollars. But yeah, um, what I believe Barcelona's offer they're wanting to offer, I believe um two hundred fifty mil and then also plus, um Gabi, which is surprising, and then another player for Barcelona. I think De Jong, Frankie Frankie De Jong. But yeah, that's crazy. So let me just ask our guest for Solomon one or two words for this news. I don't think he's gonna go to Barcelona. He's probably going to Real Madrid. Yep, I agree. That's where the Ninja Turtles were founded. So I agree with that. All right, Dimitri, one or two words for Mister Kylian Mbappe. I know you have so much to say. Mm-hmm. No, I 
Have the time of my life. Okay, don't get copyrighted. Just you're Give just it all it. to you. Okay, good job. I'm going to just give you a little wah, wah, wee, wah. for that. Good job. All right, well, now let us get into the next news, which is indeed about... Oh, oh actually, I love this. So, basically, the basics of the basically, the future of football. What's going to happen? How is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? So, how VR, AR, and the metaverse could change the fan experience beyond recognition. So, in the latest fo Future of Football strand, we look at how VR, AR, and Metaverse will affect the future of football from a fan perspective and why the advancement in technologies will change the face of football for fans, clubs, and broadcasters. So, imagine the scene. Everybody, imagine. I'm not reading off a script at all. Imagine sat in the stands. You are locked deep in debate with your mates about how well your favorite player is doing. There is no chance of agreement, so you whip out your phone, point at the pitch, click on the head, and up pop stats from the game in the real time. So this is actually what's happening right now, but you can already do that exactly. Yeah, well, I said that. Haha. <laughs> you can already do that exactly in certain points of the world, and with widespread adoption is not far away. So that is just the tip of the iceberg, heading towards a culture where virtual reality, augmented reality, and the metaverse, Mr. Zuckerberg, the lizard, are going to become a more influential in the years and decades to come. So Apple's recent mix of three, of three through its that's a Apple's mix of three through that's a tongue twister. Vision Pro headset won global headlines when it would be announced, but there's a but for Heath Sterling. There is far more to this emerging industry than looking as you were wearing oversized swimming goggles. Okay, that's rude. So yeah, um, uh, this there's a lot of other some fans have already had this taste. So American football and baseball supporters have tried this as well too, and they are looking to accommodate it into their actual series. But knowing football, that probably is going to be you know interplaced in the football world probably in four to six years or so. But I'm actually excited for it. I would actually pay for this. But yep, it is what it is. Salman, you got one or two words for this. VR possibly coming into football for fans to see a closer view. I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool, really cool. Uh, yeah. The concept is pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Fair, fair, yeah. fair. Dimitri, you got a saying on the VR for football, not anything else. Football. Football, Dimitri. Football. Uh, yeah, I watched. Blue Lock, it's pretty good. It is a good show. I agree with you. All right, cheers. All Did right, you really watch it, though? Yeah. My friend, surprised. favorite character is uh, Chainsaw Man in that one. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right, next news. It is indeed about... Uh-oh, eight. What does that mean? There is a rule changes for a new football season. Officials to crack down on dissent. You're a bad boy. You're a bad, bad boy. Be more lenient on physical challenges and add on wasted time. So the Premier League and EFL officials will add World Cup style amounts of injury time ugh, to matches as a part of directives for the new season. A higher threshold for contact between players will be applied. That's actually awesome. Let's go Brexit tackle. Let's do it. Players will be booked for crowding the referee and the managers must stay in the technical area. Okay, that's fair. I agree. Yeah, so a crackdown on wasting time and dissent will be much stricter policing for the bench and technical areas as well too are at the heart of the new refereeing guidelines and that will be forced at the start of the new football season. Huh. That's interesting. So, from the first championship game on Friday which sees Sheffield Wednesday take on Southampton live on Sky Spots added minutes at the end of the EFL and Premier League matches, now expected to frequently run into double digits. Oh, God. As they did in the World Cup and guitar. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. Um, Solomon, do you have anything you want to say about this or just one or two words? Because we're going to be watching games. For Games are not going to be their normal two, two hours. They're going to be two hours and 30 minutes. 
Well, I mean, this is kind of a good improvement, to be honest. Sometimes, like, you can see it's infuriating to see somebody just wasting time, a lot of yep. time. And, like, the goalies, the, the like, whenever they have the free kicks, I think it's, uh, it's a good, it improves the game. And yeah. sort of, like, yeah, if, if it is, yeah, like, it's just cutting down and the amount of time that's wasted and also more stricter that i think the referee should have a lot of say like an american sport they do have the announce the ability to announce what uh sort of i guess foul somebody committed especially in american football yeah and uh, they have sometimes camera mics and stuff like that i think anything that can help the make the the game better it's uh, it's always welcome but this seems very uh, improvement and it's also uh, it's transparency it creates this uh, sort of like a stricter so you don't have to waste you just play for the game instead of just uh, you score one goal and you just waste time the rest of the time yeah. and just yeah it's not enjoyable to watch so this is sort of good improvement in the game yeah, I agree with you, and it's going to be interesting. We're just going to watch football longer, and then there's going to be more extra time goals and more drama and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. D- Dimitri, anything you want to say about this extra time? I know you do have a lot of extra time. You know what I mean. I don't know what that means, but... I don't know if I'm extra time for you, but... Oh, what a nice man. Everybody, I like am a gentleman of fine taste. Very nice. Very nice. Dimitri, can you do it together? One... Two, three. Uh, very nice. Very nice. There we go. I love that. All right, okay. on to the next news. It is indeed about. How great game. I go. That was great. Um, so Bayern, Harry Kane, Bayern Munich significantly short after Tottenham's valuation after London game. Met in London. Lovely. So Bayern convinced Harry Kane wants to join them. Although a gap in valuation still exists, Spurs record scorer opening to speak formally to the German champions, Paris Saint-Germain believe that they are in the mix. That's not going to happen. Sorry, Paris. You're stinky. Woo! Kane has 12 months left in his Spurs contract. So, members of Spurs and Bayern hierarchy discussed Kane over lunch in the capital with the talks. Where were they talking? Oh, Nando's. Lovely. With talks and continuing into the afternoon. So, the gap in valuation believed to be at least 20 million remains between negotiations. So, Bayern ready to pay a maximum of 100 million euros, which is 85 million pounds for Kane, made up for 90 million euros plus 10 million euros in add ons. So, however, Spurs want at least 100 million pounds, that's not euros, pounds for the record goal scorer who is understood to be open to speaking formally for Bayern for a deal to be agreed. Tottenham will also insist that if a buyback clause should Kane return to the Premier League. Um, Bayern Munich would like to ha- break their transfer record signing for Kane, which currently stands at 80 million euros they paid for Atletico Madrid, Lucas Hernandez in 2019. So yeah, I mean, um, I there's more to come obviously with the story, and seems that it's going to possibly happen for Bayern, and that would be pretty cool because the number nine for Bayern is much needed. And yeah, it'd be nice to, for Kane to win some trophies at least. So good on for him. Solomon, you got any one or two words or anything you want to say? Uh, uh to be honest, this one is gonna be very tough to negotiate. A lot of the things they're saying it's not realistic. Yeah, uh, I mean he's a very good uh, player, but it's a different league. Even though it's a somewhat of supposedly easier league than the Premier League. But yeah. the players, uh, he's good. He scores goals, which they need very, yeah, they need uh, that to continue the, the the domination they have over the league. So, I mean, and then I got also if 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 they didn't if they don't sell him this, uh, yeah, this summer it's just gonna be the valuation is gonna go down, and at some point if they refuse to sell him. They might actually have to give it up for free. So, yeah, it's like they're going to come somewhere. They're going to come down a little bit more. But also, there's also a good offer from Tottenham as well because they are offering him like massive, like 
salaries and then also I think I read somewhere that also um after his career ends he can also have something to do with the club in terms of uh, management or something yeah. after he retires so that's also appealing he'd been there for a long time and he's from then then he like, I don't know I think it, there's also good appeal from both sides and then he wants to win things can't really win things without leaving Spurs so it's a sticky point but I think this one is we just have to wait and see I don't know I, I don't yeah. see him going anywhere else but at the same time he, if he, want, he says he have an ambition he wants to win things and you can't win things while sitting in with the, with Tottenham so yeah we'll see yeah, I mean, Veronica said that she believes it's going to happen, and if a yeah. Tottenham fan says that, then, you know, yeah. whoever their best player, then it's probably going to happen. So, mm. yeah. Okay, well, Kane, we will see what happens in the next few days. All right. <laughs> I'm dying. On to the next news. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's disrespectful. What is that? Dimitri, one or two words for Mr. Kane. Not the guy from... You know, Kane, like the <laughs> Mortal Kombat guy, but two words for Kane. You know what I mean. Go ahead. Anytime. Kane. Got Dublin the- coins. I yes, yes, the coin, the Doge coin. All right. Um. Now on to the next news. It is about Mister Virgil Dan Dyke. So. Virgil van Dijk named Liverpool captain as Fabinho joins Al Etihad in a £40 million deal. So Jordan Henderson moves to El Etihad, or as uh, Stephen Jad says, El Etihad, or whatever. And James Miller switches to Brighton, left Liverpool searching for a new captain and vice captain. Virgil van Dijk is the new skipper or the captain, with Trent Alexander Arnold with his deputy as co captain. Fabinho join- joins Henderson. In Saudi Arabia for forty million dollars, no pounds. So, yeah, I mean, not much to say about this. Just Virgil is the new captain. I agree, and Alexander Arnold is the new co-captain. And that was actually released in a video with Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool coach, asking Alexander Arnold, the right back for Liverpool, to be the new captain. And that was kind of, the new co-captain. That was kind of heartwarming. So, yeah, cute, lovely. Um. Solomon, any news for any words, one or two words for Virgil van Dijk and Alexander Arnold? Well, I don't know. I don't know when this became a news. Before, we used to just know the captain whenever they step into the field. Yeah. Yeah, because Jim Terry is the captain. And then nowadays, it's like it's a big thing. It's announcements. I mean, it's good for him. I mean, he deserves it. Uh, and Trent deserves it because he's been at the club like for a long time. He's a grown, homegrown uh, player, and he does. Uh, they both of them deserves it, but I thought I just don't see the value in a lot of this uh, news like, yeah. announcing like the captain, and I don't know. A lot of things are becoming like newsworthy nowadays. But yeah, it's good for him. Good for them. Yeah, I have not much to say about it. All right, Dimitri, any news for Virgil van Dijk with his aura of defending? You know aura. You're the best aura. You got aura, and aura is within you. You got to say, Dimitri. Come on. It's okay. Don't be Don't be shy. Aura. aura. Winter Dora. Dora the Explorer. I agree. All right. Well, everybody, that was indeed the news for that. Well, I don't know why I'm speaking like that, but... Okay, we can talk about now um, some little, little transfers. And with transfers, we do like to talk about transfers. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's get into transfer market first. So the first one we can talk about, of course, Jordi Alba is going to anti Miami. That was confirmed. And yeah, I mean, good move for to Miami. They have now Busquets, Jordi Alba, and Lionel Messi. Which is, huh, it's insane. I, they're gonna build up, bring back the whole squad, and they're also linked, possibly getting Suarez, which is eh, maybe not happening, maybe happening, and also some other uh, Barcelona players that I don't want to speak about yet. So yeah, could happen. All right, well we can go now for 
another done deal for PSG signing a uh, goalkeeper, Alnel Tenaz, as a free agent for five million. Uh, it was just for years now, that's not what I mean. Just a young keeper, 22 years old. And then also another one from Barcelona to FC Porto, Nico Gonzalez, for 21, or he is 21, for 8 million. And yeah, good deal for Porto. And then another one, done deal, Alan St. Maximan. I know all the Newcastle fans out there listening are punching the air right now, who went to Saturday for 30 million. And yeah, um, I don't know, disappointed. I really like St. Maximan in the league, but here's what it is. Then another one is Ante Rebic. Oh, I'm surprised by this. Going from AC Milan to Visaktes for six million. Wow, that's dang, that's sad. Yeah. All right, and then another one done deal. Fabinho going from Liverpool to Etihad Club as well too in Saudi Arabia for forty-six million. And then another possible rumor that's going to happen is Jeremy Doku going for Staterren and friends to Man City. So, the young player, 21 years old, also he's going to go there. And then another done deal, Leslie Ugochuk. Oh, I can't say. Ugochuku. Leslie Ugochuku. Okay, I like his name. Going for Staterren to Chelsea FC for 27 million. Yeah, they made a hefty amount of this, but Yep, the young midfielder going there, 90 years old, so got a point to prove. Chelsea, a good job for you. Then another one, big one, Sergio Mane going from Bayern Munich to Al Nassar. I don't know if it's the best move, but he is getting a little older there. He's 31 years old, but going for 30 million, and yeah, going to play with Ronaldo. Why not? Then another done deal is Karim Demarbi, Demarbe, 30 years old, going from Bayern Leverkusen to Galatasaray, yeah, for six million, so good for him. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other rumors, I guess I can say about Yunus Musa going possibly from Valencia to AC Milan for possibly 20 million. Another rumor, David Rea going from Brighton to Arsenal, the keeper for Brighton, or sorry, for Brentford, 27 years old. And rumor, oh, that's not gonna happen, but Mbappe possibly going from, I'm not gonna say possibly, just PSG to Liverpool. Possibly gonna happen. I really doubt it. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about most of these. Another rumor: Romeo Labia possibly going from Southampton to Chelsea, and then Callum Wilson possibly going from Chelsea to Fulham. But I believe that might happen too. So, yeah, I mean, not much else to say besides, yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. But another rumor: Sergio Ramos possibly going to. Yeah, that's right. Over 4.5 million. So never gonna have never know if you're gonna have it. Yep. Um, Solomon, do you have any transfers you want to possibly talk about as well too? Joe Cancelo possibly going from City to Barcelona, maybe. Ah. Um. Yeah, like uh, the saga of like uh, Pasado going to Chelsea, maybe oh, not going gosh. not, or maybe tomorrow, maybe today. That is one thing, and. Uh, it's gonna be unending and then the other thing that i was gonna talk about was there's a couple of uh rumors i think dembele is going <laughs> uh, so August, yeah to psg and he's asking like he's gonna get the uh, 25 millions of cuts from that deal and then sadio mane completes move to al nassar again with uh, ronaldo and then uh the other thing is buffon is set to retire from football after like what yep uh, you're right like, 100 years of service. Legend of the game. I agree. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I think. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a couple of Chelsea. There's a new signing for Chelsea. And um, I think that's pretty much it. I think you covered it at all. But, uh, oh, I think uh, uh, Giannis uh, Musa is going to Milan actually for medical on Thursday, I think. Ooh. Yeah, that's a great signing for them. Yeah, it's gonna be great signing two, three Americans in one season. That's gonna be fire. Yeah. Okay. Well, yep. That was a transfer talk, everybody. And now, let us now get into one of our favorite times of the week. And we have two favorite times of the week, actually, which is indeed. Let me get out my little my 
little pony, my little pony. That's not the song. <laughs> It's time for the Golden Goal Show Football Quiz. Yeah. I don't know what the accent was, but we're going to right now. So, yeah, everybody. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is the Golden Goal Show Football Quiz. If you don't know how it works, I ask our guests questions, and they see if you get it right. They get 10 questions, and they only have a time limit of 10 seconds because I said 10 seconds now. It used to be 20. Now it's 10 because people take too long. Stinky, and then yeah. So whoever gets the most right at the end of the time does win a prize of one million Fortnite battle passes. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Solomon, are you ready for this quiz? Ah, born ready, born ready. Sweet, sweet. Dimitri, contender, are you ready for this quiz? I know you are built, born, and blood born for football and for this quiz as well too. I know you've been studying. So what do you got to say about this? Are you ready? I just need to hear some enthusiasm for you. Some Yeehaw. Okay, I like that. All right. All right, well, first question. I'll just quiet it up. Just keep working. So let's start with an easy one. The 2019-2020 Premier League season was the blank season of this league since it's been established. So was it the 29th season, the 28th season, the 27th season, or 26th season of the Premier League? You have 10 seconds. So 29, 28, 27, 26. You have five seconds. 29. Okay. Yeah, 1995. You have three seconds. Three, two, one. Solomon? Uh, 28, 28. All right, the answer is indeed 29. It's wrong. You guys are stinky. So, um, the actual answer is indeed. I can tell you in a second. Wait, what? I'm confused by this right now. Actually, okay. Sorry. The actual answer is indeed. It is not indeed.com, but is it? It is in in the beginning. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to still figure this out right now. It is indeed. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. No. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. I'm so good. Okay. Um. Is this not? It's it's not showing me the right. All right. All right. What, oh. No. Um. I'll probably edit this. Oh, crap. No. Right now. I don't know why it's not showing me. The answer for this for some reason. Okay, one second, one second, one second, one second. Okay. Are you doing your research right now? Like, let no. me go to Wiki Wikipedia. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh, this is annoying. This is very. Oh my. Okay, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do another football quiz. This one's annoying. I don't know why. I picked this one. Okay. Um. Okay, uh, let me try this again. What? Okay, yeah, I need to I need to go back. Okay. Mm. Alright. Sorry that took so long. Um Okay. Um Uh, okay, no, sorry. This is not this I wanted. Yeah, we can do this one. Okay. We can restart there. All right. All right. First question. Who was the top scorer in the Premier League 
first season, 1922-1923. Alan Shearer, Liz Fernandez, Teddy Sherringham, or Dean Holdsworth. So Alan Shearer, Les Ferdinand, Teddy Sherringham, or Dean Holdsworth. You have 10 seconds. Halle Berry. Uh, so Alan Shearer, Les Ferdinand, Teddy Sherringham, or Dean Holdsworth. TD. Okay. Three seconds, Solomon. Uh, I'm just most familiar with the uh, Alan Shearer, so I'm gonna say Alan Shearer. Oh my God, Dimitri Teddy Sheringham got it correct. <laughs> so Dimitri, you indeed get a, and Solomon, you get a <sighs> one to nil for agent. That's why he's an agent. All right, next question number two: Which manager was the only one sacked? That first Premier League season. Glenn Hoddle, Steve Coppell, Peter Reed, or Ian Potterfield. So Glenn Hoddle, Steve Coppell, Peter Reed, or Ian Potterfield. Which manager was the only one sacked in the first Premier League season? You have 10 seconds. Wait, like ever or like which season? In the first in that first Premier League season. So the first Premier League season. Okay. Uh, Glenn, Steve, Peter, or Ian? Glenn Hoddle, Steve Coppell, Peter Reed, or Ian Putterfield? Dimitri, I guess. Five seconds. Three seconds. Um, I'm going to say Glenn Hoddle. Okay. Peter Pop by promo. Okay. Um, okay. Um, wait, what did you say, Solon? <laughs> Glenn Hoddle. It is indeed Ian Potterfield. So, Dimitri and Solomon, you're zero for you guys. Come on. What's your football knowledge? All right. Next question, number three. Which player won the PFA Player of the Year Award in the opening Premier League season of 1922-1923? Paul Ince, Paul McGrath, Chris Waddle, or Gary Speed? What a name, Gary Speed. So, which player won the PFA Player of the Year Award in the opening Premier League season, 1922-1923. Paul Inc., Paul McGrath, Chris Waddle, or Gary Speed? You have 10 seconds. Oh my god, this is so hard. Yep. Is that good? All right, uh, I'm going to say uh, McGrath. Paul, Paul McGrath, Chris Waddle, or Gary Speed? You have five seconds. Dimitri. Paul seconds. McGrath. Okay. What did you, you say, um, Solomon? <laughs> Paul McGrath. Okay, well, the answer is indeed Paul McGrath. That is correct. Wow. So you both get a and another. So it is now two to one. And we are into the fourth question of the quiz. So in the 97th, 98th season, three players finished joint top scorer. Which of these strikers was not part of that trio? So number one, A. Dion Dublin, Dion Dublin, lovely. Chris Sutton, Dennis Bergkamp, it's Bergkamp, or Michael Owen. So, Dion Dublin, Chris Sutton, Dennis Bergkamp, or Michael Owen. Which strikers did not finish as joint top scorer? You have 10 seconds. Uh, wait, say the options one more time. Dion Dublin, Chris Sutton, Dennis Bergkamp, or Michael Owen. Five seconds. Michael uh, Owen. Okay. Sutton. Okay. The answer is indeed. Well, Dimitri, congratulations. And Solomon, you got it wrong as well, too. Okay. The answer is Dennis Barakam. There is Barakam. There is Barakam. Yeah. Get it. So, still 2 1 for Dimitri. Come on, Solomon. Pick it up, man. All right. Question number five. In the 2003-2004 season, which goalkeeper made it into the PFA Team of the Year? Was it Jens Lehmann from Arsenal, Tim Howard from Manchester United, the American keeper, Carlo Cundincini from Chelsea, or, G or Jersey Dudik from Liverpool? So which goalkeeper made the PFA Team of the Year in 2003-2004? Jens Lehmann, Arsenal, Tim Howard, 
Manchester United, Carlo Gudencini from Chelsea, or Jersey Dudik from Liverpool? You have 10 seconds. I just go with Liverpool. Got it. I'm just going to go with Arsenal. Okay, well... The answer is indeed, you guys don't have faith in your American companion. Tim Howard from Manchester United. Go oh. on, Howard. Wow. Good for him. Uh. Um, all right. Still 2-1 from Dimitri. Question number six. We're still hot in the quiz. Who scored the 20th, the 20,000th Premier League goal in the 2011-2012 season? A, Clint Dempsey. B, Mark Albrighton. C. Leighton Bar- Baines or oh, I like this one. D. Yakubu. 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 Okay. So Yakubu. Yeah. Yakubu. Okay. Yakubu. <laughs> Got it. Um, tell me. You have five Al- Albright. Mark Albright. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Al- you sure. Mark Albright. Yeah. Uh, why are you making me second Clint guess? Dempsey, Mark Albright, Leighton Baines, or Yakubu? You have three seconds. Uh, this is uh, 2011. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with two, uh, Bright. One. All Bright, yeah. Well, uh, Dimitri, I am so proud of you. You lost. But it's all many one. So, yeah, it is two to two right now and it is hot. Very hot. I am sweating. Yeah. Probably because I just play football, but it is what it is. All right, question number seven. Arsenal, last match at Heisbury. Highbury took place in 2005-2006, but against who was it? Was it, uh, by the way, um, Highbury is a stadium. Yeah. 2005-2006. So, was it against Charlton Athletic, Wigan Athletic, Blackburn Rovers, or Middlesbrough? You have 10 seconds. So, Charlton, Wigan, Blackburn, or Middlesbrough? Five seconds. Three seconds. Charlton, Wigan, Blackburn, or Middlesbrough? Wigan, Wigan, Wigan. Two. Dimitri. One. And. Wigan. What? What did you say? Did There's you say an Charl- option for ve- vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you you both went. Okay, sure. So, wait, what did you say, Sullivan? <laughs> Wigan, Wigan. Well, you both got it right. So, hey, for you guys. Both for you. So it is now tied three to three. We're on question number eight. So in the 2000, 2001 season, three teams named City were relegated. Which one avoided the drop? Was it Leicester City A, Bradford City B, Manchester City C, or Coventry City D? So three teams that were relegated. Which one did not get relegated? Leicester City, Bradford City. Man City or Coventry City? You have 10 seconds. Commentary City. Got it. Five seconds. Three seconds. Um, I'm going to say Coventry. One. Oh my gosh, you guys are copying each other. Commentary City. The answer is indeed Leicester City. So both ah. of you. That. So, question number nine. Oh, this is about someone that we possibly might meet tomorrow, Solomon. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. Good. So, it is tied 3-3 right now, but question number nine. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck was a top scorer in the 2000-2001 season, but who did Chelsea sign him from? Leeds United, Boa Vista, Boa Vista, Atletico Madrid, or AZ Alkmaar. So, who did he sign from? Leeds United, Boa Vista, Atletico Madrid, or AZ Alkmaar? You have 10 seconds. Leeds, Boa Vista, Atletico Madrid, AZ, Alma, AZ Alkmaar. Tits. Yeah, seconds. Huh? Tits. Which one? What? <laughs> what did you say? Leeds United, Tits. Boa Vista, or Atletico Madrid, or AZ Alkmaar? Oh, <laughs> Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Salman, what are you saying, mate? <laughs> Come on. Give me a second. Oh, uh, hey, you have three seconds. Come on, three. Both uh, of you, three. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Oh my god. Oh wait, what'd you say, Solomon? I said uh, Akbar. Okay. The answer is both of you are wrong. It's Atletico Madrid. What the hell? What, Dimitri, why are we saying tits? What? Why are you saying tits? Huh? I said I've heard it somewhere. Yeah, you've been playing to the Skyrim. It's okay. Well, both of you got it wrong. <laughs> Lovely. I love that. All right. So, question number 10 for Jamie Floyd House. Like, I'm going to tell him tomorrow that he played for Tits FC. Great. <laughs> I uh, think that um, was Brest that was he played for. Love that. That's an okay. actual team in I know, France. I know <laughs> in France. I know, I know. I'm a football host. I know this. All right. So question number 10. This is the tiebreaker. Whoever gets it right wins, obviously. So which country has provided the most per- players to the Premier League outside of England? A, Spain. B, Holland. C, Brazil. Or D, France. You have 10 seconds. Spain. Holland, Brazil, or France? Five seconds. Uh, say the options one more time. Spain, Brazil, France. Holland. Oh my God! Spain, Holland, Brazil, or France? Uh, Brazil. Okay. Three seconds, Solomon. Spain, Holland, Brazil, France. Um, I'm gonna say Spain. Okay. The answer. Okay, you know what? It's none of those. So oh. it's not Spain or France. Oh. Um, is it either... Oh, I just... I'm stupid, actually. The answer is France, so... Yeah, never mind. Oh, really? France? Yeah. It's not even a lot of French, but... Oh, I guess not. Okay, yeah. well, I'm going to go to the first question of the quiz. Actually, no. I'm going to try to go back to another question of the quiz you guys don't remember, probably. So, um... Okay. Ah, this is this is hard because Dimitri was actually the goat and got a lot of got right. So um yeah, which manager was the only one sacked in their first Premier League season? Was it Glenn Hoddle, Steve Coppell, Peter Reed, or Ian Potterfield? You have five seconds. Glenn Hoddle, Steve Coppell, Peter Reed, or Ian Potterfield? Ian Potterfield. Dimitri. Yeah, yeah, Patterson. Ah, great. Um, well, you both got it right. Congratulations. All right. Um, I'm gonna just look up the a random statistic right now and see if you guys can guess that football. Okay. No, that's NFL. Um, twenty twenty-three. Okay. The sister. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. So. Who had the highest assist in football in the 2023-2022 campaign season? So, was it either A, Messi? Was it B, Kevin De Bruyne? Was it C, Mohamed Salah? Or was it D, Neymar? So, was it Messi, the Kevin highest De Bruyne. assist. Yes. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Messi. No, was it Kevin De Bruyne, Mohamed Salah, um, Neymar, or oh sorry sorry the last one I got wrong, <laughs> or was it Bukayo Saka? Oh my! Definitely not, not uh, Neymar. Actually, you know what? I'll make it even easier. Just eliminate two. Mm. No, that's not fair. All right. Who had the most assists in the Premier League? Kevin De Bruyne, Leandro Trossard, Mohamed Salah, Mikel Olise, or Bakayo Saka? That's Bakayo Saka. Okay. Um, that's your answer. Dimitri, Ke- Kevin De Bruyne, Trossard, Mohamed Salah. Osaka. Os- what? Okay, I'm oh, so, Kevin De Bruyne, Leandro Trossard, Mohamed Salah, or M- Mikel Olise, or Bukayo Saka? Bukayo Saka. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, this is going to take forever. Fuck. Um, okay. 
who this is gonna be like whoever gets this um is the winner. right first gets gets it. Who is the king of assist in football? Uh De Bruyne. Dimitri, answer. Pepe. Serious Dimitri question? Come on. Uh Kevin De Bruyne. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys five seconds. Who do you think it's gonna be? Who do you think it is? Messi. Uh, <laughs> that can be true. I think I'm gonna stick with De Bruyne still. Are you sure? Ah, uh, yes. Well, with 390 assists to his name of an Argentine, it is indeed uh, Lionel Messi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um Dimitri. You um I I'm trying to find the victory music. I can't really find um Didis. No. <laughs> Lovely. So Dimitri, congratulations. You did win the Golden Kills football quiz. Solomon, how do you feel? Oh, I just settled, you know what I mean? Uh congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I I feel uh, enlightened already. Uh, I am I uh, understand enough football and I like football because the shape of football. All right, it's, let's go it's... now to the best time of the week, which is indeed the football memes of the week. Cheers, Dimitri. You're a great sport. All right, so football memes of the week is about our man, and sponsored by Rivals Banters and. Our mascot, Elway. We love Elway because he is holding a popsicle. So, first meme of the week is about, of course, Ousmane Dembele. We talked about this French winger and possibly going to PSG, but the Barca media has been talking about him. Um, maybe not the best, but they've been talking about him. So, uh, <laughs> they said this, um, the Spanish media said, Ousmane Dembele is sleeping right now. As soon as he wakes up, he'll tell Barca he wants to leave. <laughs> And someone tweeted on Twitter saying Spanish journalism journalism might be the funniest thing in the world. So, yeah, they literally, one of the biggest Spanish outlets tweeted a picture of Dembele doing a sleeping celebration and saying that he's sleeping right now. And as soon as he wake up, he will leave. So, yeah, thanks a lot. All right. So second meme of the week is about Mbappe and Liverpool. It might happen, honestly. It might happen. You know why? Because, obviously, um, Liverpool are in talks with PSG over a sensational loan move, loan move, by the way, for Kylian Mbappe. So, and someone tweeted the talk that was going on. And it's basically someone just um, sending a DM to Dua Lipa saying, you up. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it's not going to get a loan for Mbappe. Are you, you're, you're done your head in. What the heck? Look at Elbe, he's so cute. Alright, so now, let's go on to the last meme of the week. It is about, of course, Kylian Mbappe possibly going to Madrid, and let us see what it has to say. So, there's been speculation, and it seems that Kylian Mbappe has dropped some hints as well, too, for this. So, basically, the hints, he did an Instagram story about where he was. So, he was, it said the location, I need to quiet this down, it's important. So, basically, Mbappe confirmed that he is playing for Madrid because the tag of the story is Monte Carlo, Monaco. So our manager of Real Madrid is Carlo Ancelotti. So Monte Carlo, Carlo Ancelotti, I see it going. And then, of course, there are three cards laid down for Mbappe while he was playing cards with his mates. So that means three cards laid down, the third summer of Real Madrid trying to sign him. I mean, I, I think so, maybe. And then, of course... There was a card down with number nine, which is why number nine will be his number in the squad. That's I I don't know what else proof you need to see honestly. Like I I I don't I don't think anything is gonna tell you n no and nothing. That's that's it. Wah, wah, wee, wah. That's it. Wah, wah, wee, wah. that's all I have to say, Solomon. I mean, you'd have to agree with me. This Mbappe hint is just getting outrageous, right? Oh yeah, you gotta add uh, what is Lukaku's uh, voodoo, and that's it. That's perfect. No, no, your Pogba's voodoo. You mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it? Is it Pogba? Is it? Yeah, it was Pogba. Pogba was Pogba's the guy who sent with the voodoo. Oh, the cow. Yep. Yeah, I guess. 
now everything else solved. So yeah. Yep. This is like Spanish journalism at its finest. Like, look at this. Tell me about it. Yeah, Spain's all over the map today. All right. Um, we can just go over quickly some news about, of course, the World Cup that is going on right now, and it is not the Euros, the U twenty one Euros. Of course, it is the Women's World Cup. I mean, someone, have you been watching any of the games or any highlights or anything like that? Uh, I have just uh, being passively watching. I know the U.S. is struggling. They just yep. haven't beat anybody else besides Vietnam. Uh, but other than that, like, not really. I know the, the last 16 are the obvious uh, contenders. And yep. England had the easiest time just breezing through the group stage. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren James, yeah. the GOAT. I'll yeah, the goats just killing it like every time. Like yeah, uh, which is very predictable. I think we said that, uh, it's gonna be the 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 very favorite. I think in this tournament, it's gonna be uh, England for sure. Like yeah, they go in, the U.S. is not. It's very disorganized. Uh, I don't. I I don't like their style. And the of coach, play. the coaches, and then the players are not the same. I yeah. think uh, some of them are, I, I think it's harsh to say too old, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the same harmony. They're not, they don't have, they yeah. lost that. They, like, they need, to sing. Yeah, they need they... to sing together because I do have something I yeah. want to talk about. I can sing to the <laughs> bee so Solomon. Just understand that I'm just a man with a banana. Oh. I'm a banana. I'm a minion with a banana. You understand, Gru? I don't know what Gru is. More like poo. <laughs> Loser. All right. Well, back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Eminem. All right. So let me just stop chatting. Oh, my gosh. Absolute nothing. But... Yep, currently the group stage it is right now. Three matches have been played with almost all the groups, but currently Group A, Switzerland, Norway are on top with New Zealand, Finland, not Finland, Philippines on the bottom, Australia and Nigeria on top with Group B, and Canada and Republic of Ireland are on the bottom. Group C, Jamaica and Spain on top, and Zambia and Costa Rica are on the bottom. England, Group D, England and Denmark on top, and China, Haiti are on the bottom. And then Group E, Netherlands, United States are on top. And Portugal, Vietnam are at the bottom. And then Group F, France and Jamaica are on top. And Brazil and Panama are at the bottom for Brazil. Group G, Sweden and Italy are at the top. And South Africa and Argentina are at the bottom. Messi crying. Group H, Colombia and Germany on top. And Morocco, South Korea at the bottom. So I can at least say right now for the knockout stage, it has been confirmed already for the round of 16 that some teams are already in. So, first game on August 5th is going to be Switzerland versus Spain. And then, next game, Netherlands already made it in for August 5th as well too, but to be determined who's going to be playing them. Then, of course, another game on Saturday, August 5th. Japan and Norway are going to play each other. And then the next game as well on Sunday, on August 6th, might be a different time, but depends. United States are going to play another team to be determined, and then a Monday great game right here on August 7th, England and Nigeria. And then for the next teams to be determined, both of them. And then another August 7th game, Australia and Denmark, great game. Sam Kerr, you know, beasting it up, no surprises with the Chelsea woman playing in. And then another TBD for two other teams. So, yeah, honestly, it's looking good. I'm not going to make any predictions as of yet, maybe for the next show, but yeah, it's going hot and heavy. going to be exciting. So, Yep, well, everybody, that is indeed the show. And honestly, thank you, everybody, for watching this. It was a glad to have you on and listening to my beautiful voice because I this is cockiness. We love that. So, yep, um, Solomon, thank you for joining as well, even though you're in the next room right next to me or we're about to play some FIFAs. Yeah, it's gonna be, thanks, for having, thanks for being on. And we are as well going to... The Chelsea versus Dortmund game tomorrow, and we possibly might do a little, little video about that. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes, sir. And of course, Dimitri, 
thank you for joining us, Will, too. You are the greatest being in the world, I might say. So I'm sure you're all free. Okay, that's right. Lovely. Um, yes. But everybody, thank you so much for watching. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Because without sharing, how else are you going to know that... Uh, Lauren James is probably better than half the Chelsea team. <clears throat> I didn't say it. I did not say that. I did not say that. But everybody, as we say for the Golden Girls show, in three, two, one, one. Come on, everybody. I want to hear it. One. Yeah, one love, love football. football. Thank you guys for watching, and bye. Bye. <laughs>